Hello everybody, it's Mama G here. And before we go any further, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure that you're following me on Facebook, Instagram and TikTok. All you need to do is search for at Mama G Stories. Now, at today's door on Mama G's advent calendar, I am going to read you Erin, Roderick and the Diffability Bunch. Written by Fliss Goldsmith and illustrated by Ian R. Ward. I hope you enjoy it. It's story time with Mama G. Come and hear a story with me. Love who you want to be, who you are. Learn these lessons and we'll go far. It's story time. Story time. Story time with Mama Sports day was underway, and a sad-looking Erin sat with Dora. Erin was sad because she could not compete. She had broken her leg, falling off her skateboard. Dora, as usual, watched on, drawing everything she saw. Mr. Patuari was rushing around as always. Oh, I've lost the starter's whistle for the sprint. We mustn't give up, though, he smiled. Erin's brother Roderick and best friend Benji were getting ready to start the obstacle race. Benji signed to Erin. I'm going to win for you. Erin smiled and so did Dora. Miss Ioka waited as Roderick blew a kiss to his teammates and then she signed, ready, steady, go. Erin cheered for her brother and best friend as they approached the tricky course. Dora kept on drawing silently. Dora, having autism and mutism, meant she never spoke. Roderick stopped to wave to his friends, but Benji stayed focused and leapt ahead. Benji crossed the line in first place. Winner! He signed to Erin. She signed, well done, back to him. Next up, was the basketball hoop challenge, and Elise was hoping for a win. She had been practicing hard at home. She was in the final two, having scored eight hoops in a minute. Dora drew her friend Elise, capturing her throwing the ball beautifully. Erin smiled. You're so talented, Dora, she said. Mr. Patuari ran past again. Oh, still can't find that whistle. And Ryan is getting rather upset. We mustn't give up, though, he spluttered. The crowd were fixed on the action. Good luck, shouted Roderick. He sat with Erin, Dora and Benji under the tree out of the sun. I wish I could join in, Erin sighed. Roderick patted her back. He knew how great his sister was at sports and how upset she felt. Elise came over to her friends after the challenge had finished. Beaten by one hoop, she shouted. The other player is as tall as a giraffe. I don't think he even had to jump to get the ball in. You were great, Erin told her, and Benji signed awesome. I totally wanted to take a selfie, but there were no phones allowed, grumbled Elise. Oh, I really need that whistle for Ryan, barked Mr. Patuari as he scrambled past, swiftly adding, but we mustn't give up. What's wrong with him? asked Roderick. Oh, he's always in a merry muddle, joked Elise. Ryan won't run the sprint without the starting whistle. Erin pointed to Dora's art book. Look, Elise, there's your selfie. Elise gasped. Oh my goodness, that is amazing. Can I keep it? She begged. Dora nodded and ripped out the page for her. Miss Ayoka signed to Benji to ask him if he had seen the whistle. He signed back. No. She went on to explain that Ryan was getting quite distressed as he was used to the whistle signalling the start of his race. Down syndrome 
made some situations harder for him to process. Erin got up onto her crutches and went to talk to Ryan at the start line. Hey mate, what's wrong? Ryan was going red in the face. It's not fair. I can win this. They've lost the whistle. This is my race. Erin showed him how to do some deep breathing. Ryan began to feel calmer. Don't worry, we will fix this, Erin reassured Ryan as she walked him over to the tree to wait with their friends. Elise said, hey Ryan, what's going on? Ryan took a deep breath and more calmly said, I can't run without the whistle. Benji was staring at Dora's drawings. She had drawn one of Erin and Ryan chatting and an excellent one of Rod entertaining the crowd with his famous dance moves. Ryan looked over at Dora's sketch pad and said, You are mega clever. Dora blushed and looked down at the floor. Mr. Patuari stopped at the group and sadly told them, I can't find the whistle. I'm so sorry. He dashed off to speak with Miss Ayoka and the group of friends sat silent. This is silly, Elise blurted out. We can fix this. We always find a way to fix our problems. Benji gave a thumbs up and the rest of them nodded in agreement. Dora scribbled something on a bit of paper, ripped it out and slipped it into Erin's hands. As Erin read the note, she began to smile. We've got a plan. Ryan, get to the starting line. Yes! Ryan punched the air with delight and raced to his position. Dora and Erin smiled at each other. Dora packed her art things into her bag and steadily walked Erin over to Mr. Patuari and Miss Ayoka, who were at the starting line. Smiles rippled across the teachers' faces. Erin turned to Dora and said, Your plan is brilliant. It'll help Ryan and me. Thanks for keeping me smiling today. You're a great friend. Dora smiled and looked at the floor. The sprinters lined up. Ryan was ready to go. I've got this, he shouted to the crowd and they cheered for him. Ryan was always lightning quick and it was going to be hard for the others to catch him. Dora stood and helped Erin lay down her crutches. She put her arm around Erin's waist to steady her on her broken leg. As the crowd fell silent, Erin turned to the runners and shouted, You will go on my whistle. Then she lifted her fingers to her mouth and let out the loudest whistle you have ever heard. Immediately, Ryan had taken a clear lead. Another runner was close, but as they neared the line, Ryan knew in his heart that he was going to win this. I did it! He screamed as he flew over the line. Yes! He struck a hero pose and listened to the cheers. Dora helped Erin back onto her crutches, and all the friends grouped together at the finish line. They were so proud of Ryan who was working on making Down Syndrome his superpower. He was certainly a hero to them. Mr. Patuari and Miss Ayoka came to thank the courageous kids and told them there was cake and juice back in the fan zone tent for everyone. Elise clung with pride to her picture as Dora pushed her towards the tent. Benji signed, I'm starving to Ryan who beamed and shouted happily, Me too! Let's go! Erin and Roderick stood and watched their fabulous friends. Today was a great day, Roderick told Erin. Yes, much better than I thought it would be, she replied. You know, we all have different abilities, don't we? And that's awesome, Erin noted. Roderick agreed. As they headed to the tent, he exclaimed, 
We're the Diffability Bunch. And Erin thought her brother was absolutely right about that. The end. <gasps> what a fantastic book. Do be sure to go and get yourselves a copy. It's story time with Mama G. Come and hear a story with me. Love who you want to be, who you are. Learn these lessons and we'll go far. It's story time. Story time. Story time with Mama.